lower inflation and higher gold and silver prices? What kind of bizarre world do we live in? I'll make sense of it all as we explore. I've gotta be kidding, right? Gold and silver are actually up with lower inflation data? Well, that's just it, is how to interpret that data is really the key here. But nonetheless, it's all about what the Fed uh, could be doing or would be doing soon. Now let's talk about it as we uh, reference an article here from Kitco. If you enjoy videos like this, I hope you will press the thumbs up button down below and share this video as well. But the gold and silver prices, we saw them solidly up today. In fact, for a while, we saw silver go up over $24 an ounce. It was remarkable to see. Oh, and pretty amazing to see that could climb up that high. As I record this video, it's up over 1.7%. It's at $23.79 right now. Gold is up uh, over 1.5%, up $28 to $1,811. Platinum and Palladium both saw even healthier gains today. Pretty remarkable. But uh, they are down from daily highs. But it was pretty remarkable to see silver climb up above that $24 level for a while there. The U.S. Consumer Price Index report for November showed a rise of 0.1% from October and was up 7.1% year over year. Uh, the CPI was forecast to come up from 0.3% from October month to month and up 7.3% year over year. So the slightly cooler than expected inflation data was enough to rally the stock and financial markets and the metals. And it also crushed the U.S. dollar index for a while. The CPI report lands in the camp of the U.S. monetary policy doves who want to see the Federal Reserve back off the accelerator on its aggressive monetary policy tightening path. And that's why we are seeing gold and silver prices up. Because if they continue to back off that accelerator... That means they're closer to a potential pivot that could come because there's still a lot of uncertainty in the markets. And by the way, that uncertainty in the markets and the economy in general, especially with what's going on around the world geopolitically and even here domestically, in spite of these numbers, um, uh, has a lot of people concerned. So let's talk about these numbers. A 7.1% increase year over year. Now, keep in mind that it was around last year at this time when we really started to see inflation go up. See, we still have high inflation. It's still rising, even if it's rising at a rate of 0.1% month over month. It does not matter. It's still going up. In other words, what the Fed is doing is if it's having much effect, it's having little effect because it's still rising. And think about this. The 7.1% 7 7 uh, increase year over year is the number that's stacked on top of the already 7% um, year over year that we saw in December around this time for the, well, the November numbers uh, in 2021. It was at 7%. So when you take that into account, that means we are at a 14% CPI from just over two years ago. Uh, so 14% inflation by the CPI's actual numbers in the past two years is a dramatic increase because that's really the way we should look at inflation. So in other words, on under a normal scenario where the Federal Reserve targets inflation at 2% year with this dollar losing value over the course of two years, it's lost 4% of its value in a normal economic uh, scenario uh, under the Federal Reserve's umbrella and protection of said dollar. So a stable dollar to them is a dollar that's losing value at a rate of 4% per year. To me, that is not a very good track record. And it's going to take cost of living increases just to keep up. In a reality, in a stable monetary system, we shouldn't have to do that at all. This is These coins that you see before you here reflect 
what a stable monetary system is, where the value of the money is in the metal itself. And here we have a half dollar. And this particular coin here trades for well above $20 uh, for two of these, uh, about $10 each. But it has a denomination of it on the reverse here of a half a dollar. That's kind of interesting. It's worn off right there. But uh, somebody must have done that in the aftermarket. But that's 50 cents. This particular coin here is a St. Gaudens Double Eagle. And it is a $20 gold piece. This thing, will, you'd be lucky to find one of these for anywhere near spot price. So probably $1,850. Uh, and by the most conservative standards for what you would pay for one of these $20 gold pieces. This is an example of gold and silver preserving your wealth. So when you take a look at uh, higher gold and silver prices upon lower inflation, which is what the media would have you believe is happening, that inflation is lowering. No, it's just rising a little bit, slightly less. And that is the thing to keep in mind, folks. When you have a perspective like that, even under normal markets, it should give you pause. It, will, it should give you pause that uh, that the things are out of hand with the with what's going on. I'm going to replace that half dollar with this half dollar because you actually can see the word dollar there. But nonetheless, that should give you pause about our current financial system and what's going on there and the fact that they are trying to control it and pin it based off of the... Um, and the numbers that they've got uh, based off the tools that they use uh, with tightening, in other words, raising interest rates at a certain level. We are literally hours away now uh, from knowing exactly how much the rates will climb. And likely, that'll go up 50 basis points. And But all these data that are coming in, the producer price index to the consumer price index, and the averages about there, they're going to interpret that as a meaning that they can just pull back even more and off the accelerator, which is actually a very good analogy uh, that Kitco used here. And so we saw U.S. stock indexes are up at midday and they have uh, lost early gains in the aftermath of the CPI report. So this pullback a bit of the of the prices and the markets is coming to the realization of what's out there and knowing what's coming very soon. Um Traders and investors realize the Federal Reserve still has some tightening of monetary policy in their sights. And the meeting began um, Tuesday morning and it ends in the afternoon on Wednesday with a statement and press conference from uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell. That statement and that, in, in some ways, it really doesn't matter what they do uh, because many of us have it baked in. and It's baked into the markets. Most of the markets believe it's going to be 50 basis points. But it's what he says afterwards as to the guidance, the forward guidance for the Federal Reserve that will be occurring that are going to really drive the metals prices when that speech happens. The European Central Bank and the Bank of England met on Thursday and are likely to follow the U.S. Federal Reserve with half-point rate hikes. I believe another central bank has done it recently. It may have been the Canadian Central Bank who did the same. Uh, but there's where we are at with the with that what's happening there. So the key outside markets saw, also saw the U.S. dollar index sharply down, hitting a 5.5 month low for a while there. In fact, I'm going to look on my app and see exactly where the dollar index is now because it's not down nearly as much, uh, but it is down uh, almost a full percentage point right now uh, to 104.02. Anything above 100 is considered pretty strong dollar. Uh, but uh, anything, I remember when it was trading in the 90s, and of course the dollar wasn't really under a whole lot of threat. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, really dollar really isn't. It's going to take quite a bit. You're hearing more and more stories about uh, the BRICS nations and nations associated uh, with uh, the common theme of trying to break the dollar's hegemony. Hegemony, and when you do that, you are going to start to see uh, more of these breakaways that could chisel away at the dollar's dominance in the world. But that's really what it's amounting to. It's going to be a slow process, and these stories, although I cover them here, and it's considered, you know, 
a fairly big news in the grand scheme of things, considering especially that 60% of all international transactions are done in the dollar. It has a very, very minor effect. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, when we see uh, the inflation rise and the dollar tumble, uh, that kind of runs in opposition of what most of us think should happen. So it almost seems like a joke. You know, can you really be kidding us about how these things are interpreted by the markets? And a lot of it is, is, is based around what the Fed is going to be doing, not necessarily now, but likely when they meet next after the December meeting and see what, they ha what happens there. Uh, remarkable, uh, interesting times we live in for sure. And uh, I think this is a further um, calls to, for us to understand that accumulation of gold and silver in various different forms, such as even what you see here now, although most of these are considered more collectible coins, pre-33 gold here in the St. Gaudens. But nonetheless, it's the metal behind it. And you can see that dollar denomination there is way out of line with the actual value of gold. Uh, but nonetheless, remember, there was a time when gold was fixed at a value of $20.67 per ounce. And this has uh, $20 worth of gold at the time because this is not exactly an ounce. This is 0.96. And so this is uh, that's where that fixed price was. That's the gold standard. This coin represents a time when we are on the gold standard or or, or uh, even even though the Federal Reserve System was in place in 1915, it barely had an effect uh, in competition with the gold standard. So there you have it. Let me know what your thoughts are on this news. I uh, hope you found this video insightful. And again, if you're if you're here, if you could press that thumbs up button, uh, I would love to see uh, half of the viewers that watch this video hit that thumbs up button. Even if, I get, even if I could get a quarter of you to do it, that would be pretty remarkable. But a multitude of gratitude to all of you for taking the time to watch this video. And I want to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.